Welcome. My name is Renee Marie Smith with 5TV, a trending 50 web series about 50 entrepreneurial women in America. We are in the Miami Design District with Brett Graff, author, economist. Thank you for being with us here today. Oh, it's great to be here. You know, I heard that you've recently taken up a new instrument. <laughs> We're going to start off with that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was a surprise. Yeah. Y yes, and what is this instrument? So, last summer I started taking ukulele lessons because, um, well, it's the easiest, it's much easier to learn than a guitar because there's only four strings. And um, I had, there's a lot of problems with my ukulele playing. <laughs> Among them, I'm not very good at. But I'm not. Not only am I not good at it, but I ha um, I tend to accompany myself by singing, and most people find that horribly offensive, particularly my kids. Which which part, the ukulele playing or the singing? Well, I think they're. I don't think they're. Um, I don't think they're pleased with either. But the singing <laughs> is what really gets them to be like, Mom, can you go in your room? Apart from the ukulele, you and I are kindred spirits because I'm also an economics major. Okay. And I don't know about your experience in university, but towards the end of my major, I was pretty much the lone woman or only one or two. What led you into getting into economics? So I was a business major and I took, um, I took macroeconomics and I really, I liked it so much. I can't remember if I liked it so much or I thought it was so easy. Either one of the, but I was like, wow, you can make a whole major out of this? I thought, and you know, it's funny because I thought at the time, well, what's the difference if you're a business major or an economics major? Like, I, I really thought it's the same job, it's the same, um, it would have the same outcome. And it was, it was one of those decisions I really didn't think through very carefully. I just did, I said, oh, I can make this my whole major. And it, it was, it changed my whole life. So I was an economics major and then I became an economist, which was not a job you could get as a business major. Actually, the requirements, you had to have an economics major and then, um, you know, and, and, and after some time, and, you know, I, I know you want to hear it later about how I became a journalist, but after some time, I became a family finance expert and I became the home economist and so it really shaped my entire career with, with a split second decision that I made you know, one afternoon, I didn't even call my parents from college to tell them I changed my major. Like, isn't that something you should, you should do? Like, that's how insignificant I thought it was, and how. Well, like I said, I don't know. I mean, it seems to have worked quite well for you. But I'm curious to find out how did you transition from being an economist with the U.S. government into deciding you were going to help families control their economic issues? Well, actually, there's a there's a few steps in between there. Do you remember? I don't know. I, I don't want to. Do you remember the Million Man March in Washington, D.C.? Yes. It was, okay. It took place on the Washington Mall, and I worked at the Department of Labor, and from the top of the Department of Labor, you could see the entire uh, mall. So um, we went over, we used our, you know, our passes, you know, our, you know, with, with our key cards to get in, and uh, well, we went to the, t I went to the top of the, to the roof, and I walked out there, and every single news station, like Tom Brokaw was out there, um, local news stations were out there. Every single television station had a tent. They had their anchor set up. They were, uh, they were, you know, they were covering the march. And I thought, oh my God, this is what I want to do. This is my next step. So when I moved to Florida, I moved to, I actually moved to Florida to um, be with my husband because he lived here. And I said, I'm going to become a reporter. And so I. It took, it took a while. And my friends were like, don't they usually give those jobs to journalists? <laughs> and I was like, yes, but I think I can do it. I think I can pull it off. So I got a job as an editorial assistant, which is kind of humbling, you know, because I had a big job at the government and then I had to, I had to, you know, take a few steps back in order to move forward. And I was an editorial assistant and then I became a staff writer at the paper I worked with, it was a business newspaper. And that was a lot of fun. And then when I left, um, when I left being a full-time staff writer, I was at Reuters. I was a correspondent at Reuters. And then I was freelancing. I had my children. And uh, I had a friend at the Nightly Business Report who called me and he said, listen, Brett, the, the government is saying that inflation is low. And we're all saying that prices at the supermarket are high. Like, I come home from the supermarket and every single week my my bills are higher, and, and, and I want you to tell me why. And I said, oh, it's easy. And I explained to him, you know, why the inflation rate doesn't 
really reflect everybody's spending, especially um, like if you have a big family and you buy a lot of food. And they were like, oh, that's 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 interesting. And, the, and we, we turned it into a segment on PBS called The Home Economist. So that is when I got back into um, writing about for families. And then since then, The Home Economist has been, um, well, it was a column in the Miami Herald. It is a column in the Miami Herald, it's, which is syndicated on the Times, on the Tribune content agency. And, you know, I wrote a book, as you know. Um, and what is the name of the book? And my book is called Not Buying It, Stop Overspending, and Start Raising Happier, Healthier, More Successful Kids. You've had quite a career. Economist, author, PBS commentator. What do you see your vision now for yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm evolving. So one of the things that we are going to do is um, uh, seminars for women. You know, so many women find themselves suddenly in a situation where they have to manage their family finances. And sometimes it's unexpected, sometimes it's expected, but it's always shocking. Do you know what I mean? So I think that, the, so I, we're, I'm actually going to hold a seminar coming up and I work with a financial advisor at JP Morgan and we are going to do five things, you know, that women need to know and that they need to do right now. Trending 50, we're really trying to start a conversation similar to what we're having now, which is, you know, women defining success. So how do you define success for yourself? I would say that when you're proud of what you've done, it's a success. I have had, well, I mean, I was a freelance writer for so many years, and I took some pretty embarrassing projects. Like, I, like I, I was like, oh, I'm going to use a fake name of it. <laughs> <laughs> like some articles that I wrote for some magazines that seemed so silly at the time. Or um, I actually edited, I was the editor-in-chief of a magazine that I wasn't proud of. And people, um, and you know, the, the publishers were looking for something that, um, that I just didn't think would be respected and, and read even by, by the community the magazine claimed to serve. So I don't consider that a particularly successful endeavor, whereas my book I'm, I'm very proud of. It's filled with research. I know it's quality research. All the research is from esteemed institutions like you know Harvard or NIH, um, American Academy of Pediatrics. I mean, really, it's, I don't actually give any advice in my book. I, I, I go to experts for that. I promise. In fact, I use myself as an example of what not to do on several occasions, but the book to me is successful not because of how many copies were sold or how much attention it gets. And I do I do see that it resonates with people and, and it touches people in ways. I mean, I speak all over the country and I go to different communities and I start off, you know, and they, and, 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 all, and they, everybody walks in and they're like, it's not for me, you know, they're in their furs and their diamonds. And by the end of it, it's a therapy session. Like everybody <laughs> is, you know, um, asking questions and confessing and um, concerned and about what everybody else is thinking and it's and I and that feels good too but I think what I I think that when you're proud of what you're doing then you can call it a success well thank you so much Brett for taking the time to be with us thank you thanks for having me This is Renee Marie Smith. Thank you for watching 5TV, a trending 50 web series. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and share.